Okay, uh, we're on to couplings. This is the second portion of the pumps presentation. Uh, couplings, like I mentioned in the earlier slides, uh, connect shafts of, di of different sizes and diameters. Uh, they transfer energy. They allow for slight misalignment. They absorb starting torques. They dampen vibrations. And they also, uh, this rubber piece here, uh, part of the, of the coupling, also can act as an insulator between electrical uh, parts of the motor and the, and the wet side of the pump. Uh, they allow for end movements of the shafts also. Alignment techniques. If you see a question again, uh, if you see things highlighted in red, they could be test questions. Uh, on the test it asks how to properly align a coupling and uh, the, the correct answer on the test is using a straight edge and feeler gauge. Uh, you may uh, need to use a dial indicator. There's a laser type as you can see in this application here. There's uh, ways to different ways to line those up. Generally, if you had severe vibration upon startup, uh, that would indicate uh, misalignment. Uh, these and they do make a racket. I have had that happen. Uh, so anyway, uh, you, you need to do your best to try to line these up uh, to so you don't get the vibration and racket from. Uh, uh, from being misaligned. This is a pump oiler here. You can see uh, this is where the oil, the mineral oil, sits inside that. Uh, you've got this little solenoid that energizes and opens up when the pump kicks on and then the oil drips out of this oil reservoir. Right here is where there's a sight glass where you can count the drips and then this uh, drops down and goes down into the pump column and this is where it lubricates the shaft. This is uh, this this has to be a food grade mineral type oil. Uh, on the test, it says what's the how many uh, drops per minute? It's five drops per minute is uh, what you should do. We we would always encourage you to follow the manufacturer's recommendations, but if you see this on the test, it's five drips per minute. It has to be an approved food grade mineral oil, and so if the pump has been pulled for repair, uh, you should uh, take a back T sample. Uh, so that you can uh, ensure that uh, what you've uh, been doing that, that, that uh, has clean water to pump out of it that can save you from uh, having to put your people on a boil order. Uh, so if you pull it for repair, take a back tea sample before you put it back in uh, in service. And then you should also, in the winter time, uh, you should drain the water from the pump piping so that it doesn't freeze and crack. Uh, your piping so this you might see that also on the test too. Uh, it, for station flow uh, this is a rules question but uh, if you have uh, two pumps in a station each pump has to be able to uh, pump the maximum flow of the station so they don't add up you know one pump does half the other pump the other half each pump has to pump the maximum flow. Uh, before the shaft uh, make sure that the bearings are wet before starting. That's when I was telling you you want to make sure you turn that shaft by hand of a set for a period of time uh, so that the bearings if there's any dry parts of it that they get uh, get oil on them. Uh, when the flow increases uh, it, it, de it increases with decreased pressure head. So if you don't have uh, if there's no pressure to operate against and the flow would be higher but once you start building pressure and the pressure head from the tank, uh, then your flow starts to decrease. It, it backs off. Uh, if you uh, alternate pumps, this is also a question on the test, alternating the pumps, like if you run this for a period of time and then this one, uh, it keeps the windings dry and serviceable. Uh, booster pumps, they're used to fill tanks and supply pressure to mains. That's the, uh, th that's the purpose of a booster pump. That may, You might also see that on the test. Pump wear and tear, the pump condition uh, may be checked by comparing performance when it's new. So when you get a new pump, you ought to check that. Uh, take your readings with your pressures, your flows, and see what that uh, pump operates when it's new. And that way you can track as, as your efficiency starts to drop off, then you'll, see, you'll be able to see it. Uh, wear is the main cause of loss in pumping efficiency. So as your pump wears out, like I said on the wear rings in the previous uh, presentation, uh, and you get that water recirculating, that's that, that causes loss of pumping efficiency because the water is circulating rather than going to uh, where it's supposed to in a tank. 
uh, or into the system. Uh, so a pump will, uh, as it wears out, it's going to run longer. It'll still pump, but it's going to increase your power costs. And this thing here, I, I learned, uh, I was uh, shining a flashlight on my, on, on packing because it was leaking and I saw shiny stuff. Well, what it was is brass and it was telling me that there was wear going on. So if you see uh, particles coming out of your, uh, out of your stuffing boxes to adjust your packing, it could be some wear going on down inside the pump. Uh, eccentric reducer goes on the suction side of the pump and concentric goes on the discharge side. Uh, the eccentric is installed with the flat side up and it keeps air from entering the casing and it's usually one side larger than the suction inlet. Concentric is uh, one size, uh, increases uh, the pipe one size. It reduces the velocity and head loss for higher pumping efficiency. Again, uh, these should be drained during uh, when it gets winter and freezing conditions if you, uh, if you don't heat your buildings and that they should definitely be drained. Uh, this is an eccentric reducer. You can see the flat side up here, and then it has this piece here. And this flat side keeps air from getting trapped up in there. So uh, that that's the purpose of it. You don't want to get air trapped up in here and get that inside your suction uh, side of the pump. Uh, valving a check valve helps the keep the shaft from spinning backwards. It shuts uh, if you have no check valve. You can start and stop a pump with the discharge valve closed and then you open it slowly and that also helps to minimize water hammer uh, so um, what check valves do is they keep the water uh, from going back down the pump column after it's uh, filled the tank this is a check valve here this is called a swing check as the water hits this uh, flapper this part of the swing it hits that opens and it keeps the water going this way so when you shut the pump off the water this will shut this flapper will shut and keep the water from going back down uh, into the well or wherever it's been pumping from. This keeps the, the flow from going back inside uh, the pump. This is a silent check. It's got a spring-loaded uh, piece here that keeps this. Uh, this is the piece that opens up and allows the water to pass, uh, pass through it. Uh, this is a pump control valve. And... Uh, uh, this valve, when you when you turn the pump on, this is closed. This is a, a, a regulator type thing. They call it a pump control valve, and it keeps pressure on top of this the, the bonnet here. And when the, when you kick the pump on, uh, it the, the pressure on the top of this is is released off, and this slowly opens. So this uh, diaphragm in here slowly opens up, and then it trips this uh, mechanical switch here. So when you shut the the pump and put the pump in the off position it continues to run and what happens is this uh, pressure the water is pressured back on top of the bonnet here and this slowly closes and as this uh, uh, comes down into this position it trips that switch and that is what's at, what actually shuts the motor to the pump off so this essentially starts against uh, and stops against a closed valve which uh, minimizes water hammer on your system uh, this is a foot valve, and, and as the uh, it's, it's uh, it pumps uh, as the pump is on, it pulls the fluid up through here, and when it shuts off, this drops down and shuts. So it's called a foot valve. Uh, this is an air vac, and this is a, an incident that happened where an air vac either failed or lack of air vac, and you can see where this line collapsed. Uh, this pretty good sized line, and so what it does is an air vac. Uh, prevents this type of uh, accident from happening so you happening so you crush your lines uh, because of excessive suction on them and then it also uh, allows you uh, this is a combination type uh, air vac and this allows you to fill uh, water lines and let the air escape so you don't get a, an airlock in there they place these at high points of the system so that uh, as the as you get a draw on this line, uh, this would open up and allow air in so that you wouldn't create that suction. Uh, ratcheting valves are on top of the motor. Uh, they've got a ball bearing, uh, a ball type system up here in this one. This has a this one down here has a pin. And what they do is when the pump is running, they they are directional. It's like a ratchet in your toolbox. Uh, once uh, the pump shuts off, these lock into place and keep the motor from spinning backwards. So it's another uh, piece to keep your uh, pump from spinning backwards. 
Motor maintenance, like I said, follow, always follow the manufacturer's recommendations. That will always be a correct answer on the exam. Over greasing, if you get too much greasing inside that uh, cavity, inside the motor housing, it'll act like an insulator uh, holding in the heat and it causes premature bearing failure. That heat will. Uh, the two most common speeds on a, uh, on a motor are 1800 and 3600 RPM. Uh, the uh, oil seals uh, keep the lubricant inside the, of the oil cavity or bear, uh, grease cavity. Uh, the motor uh, would overheat uh, with low pressure head, which means that it has no pressure to operate against, and so the pump is going to pump for all it's worth. If you have a low pressure head condition, you can throttle a discharge valve, and that would actually cool the motor down. Uh, and so this is, a, this is something, if your motor's hot, it's pumping for all it's worth, there's no head pressure, then you can throttle that discharge valve. If you lose a phase on a three-phase motor, it's going to single phase. A lot of people mark double phase, but it's called single phase, and, uh, and the motor would heat up if it lost a phase. A lot of the new uh, equipment that's out there, there's equipment that uh, if you lose a phase, it won't allow the motor to run. Uh, voltage imbalance can also cause the motor to overheat and burn out the windings. Uh, you blow the dust off to clean the motor housing. Uh, uh, make sure that it's you, you know you're using compressed air to blow it off. You don't use uh, any type of uh, fluids or anything on it because it's uh, it's not good for the equipment. Uh, brake horsepower. There is a question on what is brake horsepower, and that's the horsepower supplied by the motor. Uh, vertical motors, this is a cutaway, and you can kind of see how these uh, bearings here sit in this oil bath. Uh, you've got a sight glass here that tells you the uh, level of the oil inside the motor, and this is where sometimes these bearings can get dry, and that's why I was saying that, uh, you know, you want to turn that shaft by hand before you kick it on to make sure these uh, bearings get wet and get oil on them. Uh, this is your fan. This is what keeps the motor cool. Uh, one of the things is, is you always want to keep uh, a good flow of air across this motor to keep it cool. Um, there was an instance where I happened to be uh, walking the building and you couldn't put your hand on there. It was too hot to burn your hand and I told them they had to cool the motor down. And uh, the motor failed a few weeks later, but uh, it's, it was too hot. And so you got to monitor those temperatures on there. And, uh, and a lot of times you can smell the heat in that. And if you can walk in a room and smell the heat and, and it's too hot to, to touch and that is it, 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 sometimes it's too hot. So that's what I'm saying is just make sure you got a good, uh, uh, flow of air across these motors to keep them cool. Uh, this is a cutaway of a horizontal. Here's your windings. This is uh, your uh, motor bearing. You, you can see your grease cavity here. This is where you put the grease in through that Zerk fitting, and then there's a drain down there. And and what that's talking about, if you over-grease a bearing, this uh, grease uh, fills up here. If you don't take this drain out, what happens is this will fill up, and then the grease will go past the seals, and it'll get into your uh, housing here, and it will uh, cake onto your windings, and then that's it gets hot, and then the motor fails. So... Uh, you've got you've got a, a grease fitting here, and you also have a grease uh, uh, part back here, an oil part where there's a, a, a grease cavity for this part of this bearing. Uh, here's your fan on the back side of that. So that's uh, that's what I was talking about. Uh, there's a couple of motor types. This is a, a hollow shaft motor. This is a, this motor has a shaft. Uh, troubleshooting, if you lose a phase on a pump, it's going to uh, continue to run, but it's going to overheat and damage could occur. It's like a brownout in your home. Uh, if you don't have your power up in your home and the lights are dim and that, then you might burn out your compressor on your fridge or, or some of the equipment in your home that's running at the time. So, uh, you know, they tell you in a brownout that you should uh, unplug your refrigerator and things like that because it could damage it. And it's the same with a pump. If you lose a phase, it's going to overheat. Uh, cavitation, here's an impeller that is cavitated and it actually looks like it's been pumping rocks. There's a question on the test that says if you walk in a building and it sounds like the uh, pump is pumping rocks, what's happening? Well, it's cavitating. Uh, there's a popping noise and there's air bubbles that implode on the inside of that uh, balloon case and that's what causes this uh, extreme and rapid damage to an impeller and the, and the parts and components of, of that. I've also seen cavitation on, on regulators. So that, that indicates that the, that popping noise indicates that, uh, uh, that there is uh, cavitation going on. Uh, 
if by displacing the air in that that helps reduce the possibility of cavitation uh, and it's prevented by having adequate suction pressure and proper bowl depths a lot of times uh, you need to monitor your levels of your of your reservoirs your static and your pumping levels uh, because in, in drought conditions your aquifer may not recharge and you may need to lower the bowls of your pumps so uh, that's what that's talking about is make sure you have adequate uh, suction pressure in the proper bowl depths this is this is cavitation you can see it happening right here these air bubbles and this is what it causes uh, these rapid these uh, this air bubbles imploding and it's it can be uh, too high suction speed air ingestion turbulence a lot of things can cause that but uh, that's a that, that's a picture of what it looks like going on inside uh, bearing failures first detected by the sound it makes kind of a whining sound uh, and so you can usually tell uh, when that's happening uh, priming a pump uh, makes it so the pump will pump but it also prevents uh, helps prevent cavitation by displacing the air uh, accurate record keeping shows losses in pump, pump pumping efficiency. It shows your drawdown levels uh, to evaluate the condition of the well. Uh, the drawdown is the level between the static and pumping levels, and it helps determine the proper depths of the bowls. Uh, so what you want to do is make sure you keep good, accurate records. Uh, you should uh, keep these records and maintain them so you can compare uh, pumps when they're new versus when they uh, get older and start wearing out. Uh, your well seals uh, around the the casing, uh, the the head of the well, you've got seals and uh, you've got bolts. And so if I come out and do a, uh, an inspection on your system, I want to make sure that uh, there's no cracks around the the head of the well. I want to make sure all the bolts are in place. You know, you're looking for screens on these uh, on the vents to make sure that uh, bugs and mice and that can't get back down in there. And so I'm looking for anything that, it, that around the uh, the wellhead that could affect the integrity of that seal and where uh, contamination could get down into the wellhead. So uh, make sure you keep any cracks or anything that's open around this wellhead sealed off. Um, the well casing, there's perforations, there's slits or, or holes drilled, and uh, what they do is they it, it allows the water to flow into the pump. So the well casing perforations provide that uh, pathway for the water to enter that. The well casing uh, helps protect the quality of the water, and surging a well is a form of plunging or cleaning the gravel pack around that. you got to be real careful if you do that. Uh, this is a uh, drawing of, of, of a well. Uh, the well casing uh, is determined by the amount of water that's safe to yield. That is a test question. Uh, there's another question that says you uh, overhear your supervisor saying to, you're going to introduce acid into the well. And that is to uh, clean the barnacles and the rust and corrosion off of those uh, off of your perforations so that you get a good good flow of water in it. So when the when the water or when the pump is not pumping the water sits at a static water level it means there's no movement when you kick the pump on uh, that is called a pumping level and the difference between the pumping and the static water level is called drawdown uh, it, there's a question on the test that says what is it called when the what is the water level called when the pump is pumping and a lot of people mark drawdown but drawdown is the difference between the pumping level and the static level uh, positive displacement pumps uh, there's the suction and uh, discharge valves need to be all the way open. It's like if you had a blockage in your heart, like a closed valve, then you have a heart attack and something gives and, and something ruptures. It's the same with these. These have to be all the way open, your valves uh, on these. And they're used mainly for chemical dosing. That is a test question. And they're not a velocity pump like a centrifugal pump is. This is a peristaltic pump, and you get your measurement between the pinch rollers. Uh, this is a picture of one here in a cutaway. Uh, piston type pump, uh, same thing. Yeah, this this uh, oscillates back and forth, and uh, and it creates a. Uh, you've got your check valves that pull a liquid in, and then it pushes it out to to, to feed it. Um, this is a bilge type pump, and as you uh, lift this handle on here, uh, this opens up this check valve, and then as you push it down, it it exits. And so this also has check valves in it. This bilge type pump that they use to pump out uh, valve boxes and things. This is a diaphragm pump. Uh, like I say, 
as this uh, rotates you've got your diaphragm here and you pull uh, you pull the liquid into the chamber and then it pushes it out this is your exhaust port here so this is you can see these ball check valves here this, they're spring-loaded uh, this is a double diaphragm pump and it's got a diaphragm on each side so this oscillates back and forth and uh, and so you're you're actually uh, you have two diaphragms there to uh, to feed your chemical this is a screw type pump it's kind of like that Archimedes pump at the beginning in the in the first presentation uh, this this is a similar type setup as, as that you can see the uh, the bearing and then, and then as this turns uh, it pulls the liquids along uh, this is a progressive cavity you can see the cavity here and as this uh, oscillates it uh, pulls the chemical along it's a, it's also a displacement type pump this is a rotary lobe same thing uh, you've got your measuring chambers and it's a it's also a displacement type pump uh, your hydraulic grade line this is where your grade line sits and when the pump is pumping when this filling the tank the grade line uh, goes towards it and as you're uh, uh, pumping the pump out of this tank it slopes towards the pump and then this creates this grade line and so that's all you really need to know uh, when you're filling the tank the grade line slopes towards it when you're emptying it slopes away from it this is a hydropneumatic tank it's usually a third air to two-thirds water the tank uh, levels uh, are controlled by pressure switches and uh, air leaks can cause pumps to uh, cycle on and off so you get an air leak in the bladder diaphragm then the then it passes in there and this will it's called water logging and uh, you'll get your pump in that recycling uh, pump curves show uh, the flow rate and uh, pressure at which a pump operates against this is a pump curve here uh, you can see this is a 21 inch diameter pump this is where it operates the best at about a hundred and 105 feet ahead this should pump about 1500 uh, gallons per minute and you see that over here if you're pumping 1800 gallons a minute against about uh, 70 feet ahead this is when you get to where your pump will overheat and so you're pumping outside of the curve and that's where you can throttle a discharge valve to bring it back into this area okay uh, pressure head is the feet of head or uh, uh, or head feet. Uh, total static is your static discharge head minus the static suction head. The static suction head is the height of the water above the suction inlet and the pressure is created at the elevation or depth. When calculating dynamic head static discharge is part of the equation. The total operating head is the vertical distance of pumped water along with all the other head losses. Suction lift is the water level lower than the pump and the suction lift should be limited to 15 feet. Flooded means the pump has either an elevation of head feet or water system pressure to operate with. This is a uh, flooded condition here, and you can see this always has pressure on this side of the pump. This is in a lift condition, and this uh, 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 has to lift water, and so you break suction more uh, easily with this here. And that is the end of the pump part of this presentation. Uh,